Our global imperialism conquest continues today in Africa. Since we can't physically relocate college football teams overseas, we can try to mimic the conditions. So let me introduce you to the challenges in today's video. It's all about the heat wave challenge, meaning we have to play on the driest field in college football, which actually happens to be Nevada. Every game has to be turned up to the hottest and sunniest sliders. These players are gonna be cooking. And lastly, substitutes are gonna be a big deal. We're gonna have to mass substitute the entire offense every third drive. Remember, the team that conquers Africa gets to steal one player from any other ACC school or independent school, Notre Dame in this case, for as many wins as they rack up. That's not all. The winning team gets to bring two campus legends to join them on the roster for global domination when they compete on the world stage. It's all voted by you in the comment section. And now, without further ado, we spin the wheel of ACC teams to determine who goes first in imperialism, and it starts with good old Pittsburgh. Pitt's gonna have to start off by going down south. That pits them up against Clemson. Looks like conditions will be a steamy 105, as that's the highest NCAA 14 can go. Pittsburgh holds Clemson to a field goal and and remember, we're on Nevada's field. It's supposed to mimic the dry conditions found in Africa deserts. Down by eight, the boys in blue and yellow just need some positive plays. Really hoping that in this next game, we get to actually see and feel the weather conditions a whole lot more as that fumble ruski, Clemson comes on top. Pitt starting to burn timeouts and honestly that costly fumble is gonna cost them this whole thing in my opinion as it's gonna need a lot more work to get down and score twice. But sure, we can go ahead and check on these guys, see how they're doing, fourth and 10, it's not gonna cut it. So we start off with a defensive battle in the imperialism conquest for Africa. It's gonna be the Clemson Tigers moving on to the next step. The first domino has fallen and Clemson is victorious. No time like the present. Let's jump into the next one, Stanford, the new ACC team. We're gonna send the Cardinal to the left. And to me, it looks like Stanford's trying to get off this island and conquer Duke. Third and four, the Duke Blue Devils going across the middle, no one home, fourth down. Stanford held the opposition to only a field goal and now they got a chance completing on a big one here to try to take the lead. Once again, another blazingly hot, 100 five degree day out here in Nevada. It's dry. Everyone needs water breaks. In this war of attrition, Ashton Daniels and Stanford are going right down the field into the red zone, getting close to the end zone. On second and goal, this could be a QB keeper and he scrambled and fumbled the bag. Big man number 90 picks it up. Another fumble probably with implications here, the whole continent. It's easy to get tired when you're baking in the hot sun and another team fumbled the bag. Barring a miraculous play from the defense, it's just wraps. And that is all she wrote. Duke gets the dub and man, it was close. Stanford was threatening and they threw it. Stanford tried swimming away from their island, but they drowned in the attempt. Challengers are 0-2 so far in the early imperialism slate and it's gonna be Clemson back on the clock. Let's figure out where they gotta go. Headed south to go up against Virginia. Huge fourth down, Clemson's going for it. The quick out and he, did he get it? I don't think he got enough. No, turned over. Virginia defense was there to swallow this one up and the running back was inches inches short will the Cavs make it right here on offense and brother where was that running back going another third down opportunity for the Cavaliers gonna go across the middle and he bounces off the tackler but still doesn't get the first with Virginia punting it back to Clemson both teams are gonna go on their third drive of the fourth quarter meaning we're gonna have to enable the water break rule this is Clemson's third drive on offense a little look at the second string oh third and 12 two and a half minutes to go will they convert and he's wide open number six just breaking free third and eight dropping back here got a man and he's gonna be just short and oh my goodness with less than a minute to go virginia is driving all the way down and has a first in goal absolutely massive third down right here hand off to the running back he's gonna throw a stiff arm but get stuffed and did he just fumble again did he really just do that clemson defense scoops it up and is looking like they're gonna go the house to the end zone touchdown tigers seal it with a big dagger i'm telling you three times in a row a fumble decides the winner and are you serious that's the third time in a row that a fumble has just decided the winner of the game so far ball security's been tough in the blazing sun in miami let's get it on whipping that arrow around the wheel now you get to see another virginia team virginia tech miami Hokies trying to do what the cavaliers could not and that is win a game putting up a valiant effort against their rival miami third and goal will the defense stand tall i 
think so they're gonna make the stock but as you can tell celebrating virginia tech was way too premature as they just got bodied and that was all they wrote in this rivalry game it looks all misty there it's the odd angle all right let me stroke that acc wheel and see who we get next with our luck it's gonna be clemson again are you kidding me can't make it up but clemson is just seriously getting a lot of action early the trajectory pointing down makes me think it's gonna be louisville well for this one clemson has left really no doubt as louisville is gonna have to work hard in five minutes to go jamari thrash with that last catch in first down the only thing that's been thrashed today though is louisville offense Clemson defense is thrashing him. And man, he has been running like a dog today. 168 yards on the ground. They're going to give it back to him up the middle. Touchdown. Live looking at Plum Dog Millionaire here with 40 seconds to go. Can't get anything going. Looks like Plummer's not going to be plumbing anything much longer in Africa. So he's going to have to take his Cardinals home. G to the G to the Clemson Tigers. I think that's 3-0 now on the young season. Can they keep it up? Down go the Cardinals. Clemson continues their reign. This time will we land on a different team not named Clemson. And yes, Florida State. Seminole Nation, you guys are headed down to go up against the Mustangs. Here come the Seminoles and by college football revamp standards this will be an upset if Smu holds on big third down here goes Travis across the middle he's got a man number four scores touchdown Keon Coleman secured the lead for Florida State and that's another guy that made an appearance in my college football DM video so shout out to him and Smu is going to be facing a fourth down Mustangs just cracking into the red zone but because of the heat spell they have their second stringers in giving the first string a break it is their third drive after all and oh my goodness the receiver just broke free just ragged off the DBs. Kevin Jennings got his boys down here within the five. He's going to take off and get dropped. They tied up with a field goal. So it's OT, OT. There's never much love when we go OT. Travis and his receiver, they get just enough. Just about equal in total yards. First down. Travis going to step up and do this one himself. Florida State defense coming alive right now in overtime. And yeah, with third and 23, I did not expect this play to do so well. Oh my gosh. Who do you think is going to come out victorious? Will it be the Mustangs? Will it be the Seminoles? We're all tied up going to double overtime. Because just like that, it's first and goal. These guys mean business and they got a wide open receiver touchdown mustang fans are you ready seminal fans are you ready bring it everything you got in the mustang defense huge sack it's game oh baby our first major upset in africa this is crazy headline news here smew gets the dub and downs the Seminoles. Ladies and gentlemen, they got him. Onward to new conquests, and it's gonna fall to Boston College. Where will the Eagles play? They're gonna head to the right and down. It's none other than a Wake Forest Boston College matchup. I didn't know Boston College was like that as they're coming in with some energy. Doing Wake Forest dirty in this one, they have three times as many yards, and that was an interesting motion play here. Stepping up the quarterback, just makes nothing happen. And I guess Wake Forest is not suited for the heat because they are down by three touchdowns. And hold on now, first down though. Main man Mitch here leading the Deacons down into the red zone and he wants cash. Third and 20, it's not looking favorable, but why not let it fly? He's got a receiver and that is a first and goal. Fight for the Minches, big man. Second and goal, he's got his tight end touchdown. Congratulations, Eagle fans. I'll see y'all in the next. Fly, Eagles, fly. Rewind that. Let's run it back with Smew getting another test in this one. Upsetting Florida State in the first one. What will be the encore? George Georgia Tech. Mustangs got a six point cushion right now in the fourth quarter going up against Georgia Tech and they're not going to convert here. So will Georgia Tech get a chance to take the lead? King's been the quarterback back here for a while and that third town's going nowhere. And this is danger zone for the Jackets. They don't want to see anything on the offensive side of the things. Oh my gosh. They picked it off. Lost my train of thought. I was just going to say a first down would be costly. And now look at the Jackets. Late game heroics keeps them in this one. And a first down gets them that much closer to the end zone. Haynes King is going to have to pull something out of the magic trick. And that first down will do. But I need to see a little magic, a little pizzazz. And that option past the hair is just what we wanted to see. What is up with the clock management and teams getting scared of going for another play? 
Touchdown anyway. Mr. Stone and the Mustangs in danger right now. Third and 10, make it a fourth and four. All they need is field goal range and they still have two timeouts and a slip screen. Is that the right call? No, sir. Head on home, Smew. Safe travels back to the United States because Georgia Tech has a future date with an opponent in Africa. And just like that, Smew's upset victory over Florida State is a distant memory. The wheel is cranking and it's gonna spit out Georgia Tech for a back-to-back -back test. Well, these guys have nowhere to the left and up to go, so it's gonna have to be slightly to the right. And here we go, Clemson, Georgia Tech. Well, I think it's safe to say Clemson is warmed up. Am I right? Oh my goodness. The Heat is absolutely doing nothing to the Tigers, and it's safe to say that Georgia Tech's time in the sun was short-lived. And just like that, that's it. In the waning seconds, Georgia Tech punts it back to Clemson. It is a wrap. Beat them by 30. What a performance from Clemson. Clemson is battle-tested and proven at this point. They have a big piece of Africa. Here we go. Let's see who's next. It's going to be Cal... No... Boston College on the clock. Seeing a lot of similar teams getting picked. And look, we're facing Clemson again. Eagles technically 18 points out. That's three possessions. I don't know what you can do in three minutes. But it's definitely not going to stop these guys from trying at least. Here we go. Third and short. He's going to slip it out to the running back once more. And he's stuffed again. If they can't convert here, I don't think we need to see any more. So they do convert. That's another thing I've noticed. The read option is very popular here in the red zone. As you probably imagined, it was too little too late as Clemson is going to be hard to stop g to the g tigers moving on once more i think that's like five or six battle tested wins let these guys cook the expansion continues there's still a handful of teams that are yet to have their name called and are you serious right now clemson again might as well make it the all clemson episode at this point the team that makes the most sense with is syracuse hold the line i'm just shocked to see a team that's actually close in a game against the clemson tigers sure they're gonna settle for three right here but that'll give them the lead this is a game changing stop right here if they can get it fourth and six he has all day he finds his guy but it's short orange defense makes the stop are you kidding me right now the orange on defense get the stops they need and get the points on offense so orange upset clemson after their long reign here in africa there's a new victor in town i guess clemson couldn't handle that syracuse smoke and the orange are hanging in there. Well, that was a plot twist I was not expecting, and finally Cal gets their first attempt, sending the Bears to the left and up. And oh brother, Syracuse now in the hot seat. Orange quickly put to the test, it's third and five, and he just throws a costly interception. So somehow the Orange upset Clemson, but then get four turnovers here against Cal. Hold the phone. Somehow Cal was not able to capitalize on their opportunity, and Syracuse with 10 seconds left are driving. Garrett and the Orange have turned it over four times, yet they still have a chance to win it right now in prime field goal range. This is that type of stuff you can't make up, and they're going to go for it with three, two, one. They're running out of time. They don't even go for the field goal. You guys are clowns, man absolute clowns there's no excuse for this Syracuse still had a timeout and could have been a game winning field goal but chose to go to OT for whatever reason I guess they just felt like really proving themselves or something because there's Garrett he's gonna take it in and score but now you guarantee Cal an opportunity because they get the ball too in overtime and they're gonna score right on back all right somehow they're gonna say he didn't reach his body across so they're gonna have to try again and wait a minute third and goal will they actually score fourth and goal the game is literally all on the line right here right now and they can't do it so Syracuse survives oh I'm unbelievable they literally could have won it with a field goal they said nah we want overtime just to make it a little more fair and they still win first test in the big boy seat they shrug it off a handful of teams remain and Syracuse are you serious what is up with the wheel today it keeps picking on the same teams that's Miami Miami looking to dethrone the orange and they have a first in red zone now looking at a first in goal can the Hurricanes cash in right here right now yes they can orange had a nice ride but I had a hard time believing it was gonna last for the long run and well yeah what are you gonna do on fourth and 30 you punt it you win wave the white flag. Miami has dethroned Syracuse and they are now conquering a majority of Africa. That is a big win right there for Miami. They needed this and they're into the limelight in a big way. Just like that, Miami out of South Africa 
has come up the ranks and conquers most of, if not almost all of Africa. Wow, it's gonna be Miami again. The wheel is addicted. He keeps choosing the team that is holding the majority of the land. Since it's pointed down rather than up, that means Duke, Miami. Third and 10 for the Hurricanes. They're up by a clean 17. Duke's having a hard time here. Down into the red zone, Duke is driving with a minute left. They have to do a lot of work. Despite the impressive performance today from Leonard and the Blue Devils, it's gonna be a little too late here against the Hurricanes. Unless you score now get the onside kick score again get the onside kick score again get the onside kick score again get the onside kick and score again and get the onside kick i think it's a little too late touchdown leonard and the blue devils these usually never convert when i watch these and i just ate my own words oh my gosh wait a minute can the unthinkable happen i mean they got the onside kick and uh deflated bro that that's way to crush my spirit there Congrats to the Hurricanes. You guys just pulled off a wild one. Say goodbye to Duke, their little cubicle, and they're part of the island because it all belongs to Miami now. This is seriously wacky how imperialism has been shaping up and Notre Dame finally gets a crack. It's wacky in the sense that we have three teams yet to play and Notre Dame's going straight for the crown. As expected, I felt like this one was gonna go down to the wire. Notre Dame up by six and the Miami defense is swarming and they cause him to fumble. Is that gonna be recovered by Miami? It is. My oh my, Notre Dame had the driver's seat and they cough it up. Will the Hurricanes cash in for pay dirt? Henry Parrish literally just ate that dirt. He'd rather see the end zone and uh oh Notre Dame defense and what are you out of your mind so much to unpack on that last sequence he didn't pick it he caught the touchdown he shook the sack and he missed the extra point what in the world that was a wild 10 seconds and I just can't believe it it's all tied up 30 to 30 and Miami's gonna drive down the field once more third and six a little play action here he's gonna throw it out to the out receiver there Jacoby now it's the two minute drill for the fighting Irish Miami couldn't do anything with their opportunity third and ten and the Irish need a big play here and he drops it this ball has been going back and forth and on third down Miami converts both teams have been punting it back and forth the last couple drives, and because it's so hot out here, you know the rules. The second string offense has to spell the first team just here for a smidge and leave it to the backup quarterback to win the game for the Hurricanes. Just less than 12 seconds to go go Miami's doing everything they need to do just not taking sacks guys for goodness sake back-to-back -back sacks here has put you guys pretty much out of field goal range get it off instead of like a 40 yard chip shot it's a 52 yarder does he have the boot and he wins it our kicker from the DM video also comes through with a big boot and he actually replied to us in the DM so shout out to you man you are a stud muffin for winning this one unfortunately for Notre Dame luck was not on their side as Miami moves in well there were three teams remaining two in the state of north carolina and the wolf pack here we go let's figure out where they got to go that's gonna be miami here we go again miami up by eight over the wolf pack they want a date to the championship game and they're doing all they can wolf pack need to hold if they have any hope left in this one and henry's gonna take it to the end zone does nc state have the kahunas to come back down by 15 it's gonna be hard it starts right here right now though if they can just get a first down there we go honestly not too offensive Efficient right now in offense but a big play right here to 82 once more we'll get them right back in the ball game down by a touchdown Wolfpack choose to punt and trust in their defense okay that's a little interesting Miami's got a pretty fire powered offense here and they couldn't do it fresh out of timeouts this is literally their last chance to make a stop and they do Miami wants to finish things right now and they go for it on fourth and six and find a wide open receiver who just breaks free finishes him Colby Young with the KO and Wolfpack fans. Man, you guys had me there for a second, but Miami is on a freaking roll. I don't know how many games they've won at this point, but that's going to help them a lot if they can secure the continent and steal players. So the Wolfpack got to hang around for a while, but when they got their chance, it didn't mean much. And check it out. We got Tar Heels Hurricanes in the championship game. I don't think the Tar Heels have played once. I was going to say it looked like Miami was best acquainted to the heat down in Florida. But my, oh my, one game was all North Carolina needed to open up a can of whoop. So this is literally about to become an imperialism first. I don't think I've seen a team only play one game and win in the championship game. That's, that's crazy. 
Miami just with their last gasp here looking for any points whatsoever and then turn it over. Both schools trade garbage time touchdowns so I'm gonna need you all to start thinking in the comment section what 99 overall campus legends do we need to bring for North Carolina? Do we put Michael Jordan in a Tar Heels football uniform? Nah, I'm just kidding but seriously let me know what all-time greats should we bring in for the battle for world domination. Miami seriously tried really hard and won a lot of games to get here but it was all in vain. And that's right, imperialism is not always predictable, and in this case, Miami was on a roll, but just lost to North Carolina, who comes in, won and duns it, claims Africa for themselves. So the battle for Earth is really shaping up now with North Carolina determined. Spoiler alert to anyone who hasn't seen the other continental battles, but this is a look at the map I'm about to show. So go check out those other vids, and here we go. We got Ole Miss out of Antarctica, Arizona out of Asia, Hawaii out of Europe, USC out of South America, and your newest victor, the North Carolina Tar Heels, coming in hot for Africa. When opportunity came knocking, they answered. And just like the opportunity you have right now, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe on this video. And I'll catch y'all in the next. Check out any of the videos on your screen here in the meantime.